Hello everyone, welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more exciting true crime content. Today we look at a ruthless courier fraud gang who stole more than £215,000 from vulnerable elderly people, including a World War II veteran that have been jailed for more than 27 years. Pretending to be an Inspector Hart from Scotland's Yard Fraud Squad, a bogus policeman told the victims their bank accounts had been raided by criminals. The fraudster persuaded 34 people from High Wycombe and Beaconsfield in Bucks Watford, Rickmansworth, Beckhamstead, Hemel Hempstead, Middlesex, Bedfordshire and Yorkshire to hand over thousands of pounds to couriers. Prosecutor Charlene Sumnall told St Albans Crown Court that the losses totaled £215,641.60 and to alert bank staff and members of potential victims' families prevented a further £112,445 being taken. It amounts to £328,000 between March 1st, 2016 and November 29th, 2016. She said these defendants carried out a long-running, carefully planned and utterly ruthless fraud. An 88-year-old High Wycombe woman received a call from Sheik Hussein pretending to be Inspector Hart. He told her there had been a fraud on her bank account and she was persuaded to empty her bank account. Another 80-year-old Beaconsfield woman was called by a bogus PC Leonard who said that he was a local officer. He told her to call Scotland Yard on 161 as she had been a victim of fraud. The prosecutor said that she dialed the number but the defendants had left the line open and D.I. Hart spoke to her. He told her the area manager of the bank was being investigated and she was persuaded to withdraw £13,500 in euros. An 82-year-old woman from Berkshire was also persuaded to withdraw money from Barclays in Gerrard's Cross. She collected the cash and was told to wear rubber gloves whilst handing over the serial numbers to the fraudsters. She was given a password to say to the courier when he arrived. After 91-year-old World War II veteran Cyril Banks was conned out of £9,000 by the gang in 2016 in an online campaign he raised £18,000 and donated the extra money to charity. Jailing nine men on Friday, Judge Graham Allen said each victim was elderly, some were in their 80s or 90s. They are of a generation who assist police without question. It was particularly mean fraud that plays on the vulnerability of the victims. It humiliates them and must cause great distress. An organiser and principal fraudster, Sheik Hussein, 24, of Great Russell Square, Camden, and Nahid Udin, 24, of Charlton Street, Camden, were each jailed for four years after admitting conspiracy to commit fraud. Jason Udin, 23, of Ord Hall Street, Camden was jailed for seven years in his absence after being convicted of conspiracy to commit fraud. Mohammed Khalid, 24, of Port Paul Lane, Bourne Estate, Camden, was jailed for four years and three months in his absence for conspiracy. Warrants have been issued for his arrest. They had organised the conspiracy, contacted victims and controlled the couriers. The couriers were Mohammed Abdulli, 22, of Cumberland Market, Camden, who was jailed for a total of six and a half years. He was convicted of the Hertfordshire fraud and had carried out a second courier fraud in Lincolnshire while on bail. And Mushahid Mia, 24, of Amptill Square, Camden, who has two previous convictions for courier fraud. He was jailed for two years for fraud. The money launderers were Abdul Khan, 26, of Calverton Road, Luton, and Deder Ali, 24, Crestfield Close, Camden, who were convicted of entering a money laundering operation. They were sentenced to six months jail, suspended for 18 months. They were joined by Abdallah Abdallah, 27, of Piper Close, Islington, who pleaded guilty to entering a money laundering operation by allowing £9,800 proceeds of the fraud to go through his bank. He received eight months suspended for 18 months with 120 hours unpaid work. He must also attend a 30-day offending behaviour programme. At the end of the case, the judge commended DC Julian Griffiths from Hertfordshire Constabulary Serious Fraud and Cyber Unit for his investigation, saying he did a lot of legwork. What he did led to a most satisfactory result for the public. Celia Billop and her sister Penny Crimson said the fraud on their father, William Crimson, 87, of Shepperton and Middlesex, had a huge impact on his emotional health. They said before this incident, for a man in his 80s, my father was living a fairly full and active life. He was teaching a humanities class one day a week. He also had a painting on the go and he would travel into London to meet his family using public transport. He was at a vulnerable time in his life having lost his wife the previous year and finding himself for the first time living on his own as his stepson moved out the previous month. Our father had a fairly sheltered life from crime and was a trusting man. This fraud case totally knocked the wind out of my father's sail. Fraudsters played on his vulnerability. He was drawn into their deceit because he's trusted nature, his strong sense of citizenship, and what he felt was his duty to help the police. After this crime, he felt foolish. It leached his confidence and intellectual pride. It undermined his sense of self as he asked himself how he, a bright, well-read man with a critical mind, 
could be fooled by these people. He was clearly embarrassed and avoided talking about it. He clearly internalized this feeling and family and friends noticed a rapid decline in his mental health. His physical health also declined and he began to withdraw from the world. In May 2017, our father passed away. It's not hard to link this crime with his rapid demise. DC Griffith said that these men callously targeted elderly and vulnerable victims and defrauded them out of their life savings. I am pleased that they are now behind bars and I hope it brings some comfort to the victims and their families who had been left devastated by the actions of these men. Please remember that the police and banks would never ask you for your pin over the phone and would never ask you to withdraw cash and hand it over to anyone. If you received a call you are suspicious of, please hang up and alert the police. Remember to wait at least 5 minutes or use a mobile phone to ensure you aren't reconnected to the offender. What do you think about the 27 year sentence? Remember they almost got over £300,000 in just a few months. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a like and a share and leave any thoughts or suggestions you have in the comments section. We love to read through them all. And if you're new but enjoy UK true crime content then subscribe to see when our newest video releases. And as always, stay safe.